So here's all the parts you'll need. Seals, bearings, the other seal, the spacer for the uh, drive shaft. For the fulcrum, new bearings, shims, and oil seals. And for oil seals, I'm using this one piece seal instead of the old fashioned multi piece. For normal tools, you also need a vice, decent vice. Some dial gauge, you could use feeler gauges, but I think dial gauge is easier. And I'm using the uh, end of the drive shaft to set the end float, plus a spacer for the uh, fulcrum. So now I've got the hub mounted in a vise, I need to fit the inner bearing of the outer lace. I don't have a press, so I'm forced to use a, a drift. Assemble the hub. Uh, I've got some grease in the outer bearing and it should just drop on. I'm using a grease gun to pump grease into the bearing. So now it's full and we're ready to put the inner bearing, inner part in. So the trick here is we want to drift this bearing in but we don't want to drift it all the way home. We want to leave a little bit of play to take up with the drive shaft later. Just right, a bit of play in there now, which we're going to take up with the drive shaft. So here's a 0.152 inch spacer, and here's the collar that bears on the bearing. Finally, here's the end of the drive shaft. So now I've got my torque wrench on one end, and the only problem with this method is it's quite difficult to stop the other end rotating so I've just got a bar jammed in the in the yoke there to stop the other end rotating. So now I've got my dial gauge mounted with some gaffer tape and it's resting on the end of the drive shaft yoke and I can now measure the end float by levering the, the hub up. So it's reading something at 24. So the, the spacer I took out is 151 thou. The measured end float was 24. The target end flow is, twin, is two, so we need a, uh, a spacer of 0.129 inch. It just happens that the one I took out originally is 0.130, which is just fine. For the fulcrum shaft, I mount the the uh, pin itself in the vise just on the bolt and then put a spacer 
one washer on top, sorry, one bearing on top. Then drop the hub on. So now I have the spacers and the shims. Top bearing. The original spacer. You need some spare space, so I'm actually using an inner full of space, which I don't have. And then the bolt on top. So with the bolt done up tight and the uh, dial gauge set on the aluminium hub itself, we can now measure the info. appears to be nine thousand. Okay, so one hub completed, one more to go.